Thank you for joining us. We're here to introduce one of my good friends here, Jamie. And uh, she's one of those people that I've met and I instantly knew she knows what she's talking about. Um, not just the knowledge about real estate in general, but about investing, about getting funding. Anything and everything that I've asked her or thrown at her, she's always found the right answer for me. I mean, she's one of those people that I tell my friends that she makes extraordinary look ordinary. So um, uh, I'm here to introduce you to Jamie. Thank Jamie. you. Like now my head's all big. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So Jamie, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like how did you get started in real estate? What inspired you or So it's what really funny. You? I actually fell into real estate. Um, I was working at a car dealership and this lady came in and um, I had to man the front desk. And okay. so she started asking me questions and, and talking to me and as she was leaving, she said, you know, if you ever want to be a realtor, call me. Here's call my me. card. Wow. It's like, me? Real estate? Never. Because I'm thinking use car sales. Right. You know, Trick and realtor, you. I don't want to be that. Yeah. And so um, about four months later, I thought, you know, I, I want to sell my house. Right. If I get my license, I can just sell it myself. That's true. So I called her and said, I want to get, you know, I want to get my license. And uh, I went and talked with her, and she hired me. Um, and within a year, I had already done over 15 million in, in you know, sales. It right. was unbelievable. And that's what I want people to know that, I mean, look at the numbers. There are a lot of 28 year olds out there talking about real estate, and I've done a few deals, and I'm worth a few million. Here's a lady who's done, like, you know, enormous amount of wealth, and she's seen all the ups and downs. Um, and uh, she doesn't brag about what she's accomplished. So I know a little bit of your story, um, you know, being a single mom, supporting your kids and family and going through uh, a difficult time in your marriage, uh, which we won't get into in this video, but, but how did you like motivate yourself to come out of that and think that, okay, I can pull this off, I can be someone, I can become something, I can defy. It's like, how do you defy the odds is, is the question. So funny, when I look back, <clears throat> you know, I was working menial jobs. I was a hairdresser for years. Right. You're all, you're always getting complaints and, you know. Right. And I hated what I was doing. Hmm. But when I fell into real estate, it was like a light bulb went off. Wow. And I thought, this is it. This is where I belong. I see. And that is what motivates me because I love what I do so much. That's all I do. Um, now I can afford, you know, the nicer things, but I don't go buy them. It, to me, it's about the art of the deal. And I've learned from my own mistakes. I've learned from others' mistakes, which I like more yeah. to learn from <laughs> others. Um, That's true. But I, I think that it's really important that you find what you love to do and then just go for it. Just yeah. go for it. Because we only live once and we're not here forever. You know, yeah. so why would I spend the rest of my life doing something that I hated to do? That's, and that's a great point. Uh, how many people are stuck in a job or um, or a profession where you just feel like you go to work, you're not motivated. You know, you don't really have the desire. You feel like you don't want to get up uh, and go to work, you know, and it's happened to me too. I mean, I've been stuck in a job and a business where I didn't want to be there. Yeah. And your body's telling you, your mind is telling you, but you're telling yourself, no, I need the money because yeah. I have to pay the bills. Uh, so my next question is for you, Jamie, like when you do get the funds and the nice, uh, you know, investment returns, what do you do with that? I mean, can you tell the audience? I put it into it? something else. <laughs> That's what I do. You know, it's all about rolling your, your investment over into something else because okay. you don't want to go buy a new car or, you know, a boat or, you know, things that aren't going to bring you more investment back. Right. Um, and I want things that are going to appreciate so that one day I could just sit back and collect all this residual income from these investments. Yeah. Um, that's what I, I really love to do and I want to go bigger. You know, it's always right. about bigger. What's the bigger deal out right. there? Yeah, that's and that's the key residual income. It's not just having income that you pay bills day to day, but building yourself up to the level where you have income coming, you know, to you and you don't have to go chase money. Yes. Because you know, the money's always there. There's a difference between wealth and income. 
-hmm. You know what I mean? There's, um, mm -hmm. if you've got this money, I could be on a boat somewhere out in the South Pacific and still be having, you know, money coming in. Right, while you sleep. While I sleep. <laughs> and that's what I want. You know, I, so I'm always looking for that next residual income. Right, right. Um, so it's really important that you look at money in a different way. And in hmm. this society in America, we're not taught about money. Yeah, that's the key, yeah. You know, they, yeah. they should really make it a high school course. Yeah. Now tell us a little bit about if someone else wants to get started, he'll stay. Like, where do they look? Where do they go? Like, where do I go? If I wake up one day and I say, well, I have some money saved up, you know, who do I, you know, meet up with or to accomplish that? Well, like, where, where do I go? Cause find it's, it's a mentor, find you a know, mentor. find somebody that's doing what you want to do. It's really funny. I tell people all the time, mm -hmm. I hang out with people that make at least 10 times more than I do. Mm. because that's where I want to be because it just inspires you to go that extra step um, but find a mentor real estate is really fickle I've seen a lot of people lose everything that they had right so um, that is the takeaway right that a lot of people online tell you just invest in real estate and you'll become rich and get rich quick schemes and all that which we'll talk about in our next video how to get rich quicker not mm -hmm. quick exactly but but here the message is there's also a negative, a very dark aspect of it. People can lose their houses, their boats, uh, their lifestyle, uh, and their ramifications for these things. So we need to really be mindful of the fact we're investing. It's not a game. It's serious yes. money. You could lose lifetime of savings in this, right? Yes. So that's why you need a mentor. Get a mentor. You know, Get somebody who can show you who's been there, done that a few million times. So you don't have to guess. You know exactly what you're doing. Yes. Wrapping this conversation, um, and we talked a lot about 1031 exchange. We talked about saving money, knowing your numbers, finding a mentor. Um, what are your three takeaways for someone who wants to get started, who is enticed by the money that people like yourself and maybe to some extent I am making, um, and in all the nice things that comes with money? Like, what are a couple of takeaways that you can uh, that we can take with us and and uh, and really apply practically, not just conceptually? Yeah. yeah. So I would say if you're, if you're looking to get into real estate, this is not a part-time job. Okay. Um, if you're serious about making big money. Right. Um, that is one of my biggest takeaways is people don't realize the amount of time that it takes mm -hmm. to, you know, do your due diligence and, you know, don't be afraid that you're going to miss out on this deal. Yeah. So I really like the takeaway you said, um, uh, but is there anything else that you can share that can help uh, an up and coming investors become, get to the next level? Because everybody wants to get to the next level. I would say one of my other takeaways is pick a lane and stay in it. Okay. Um, I see this other thing where investors are, they want to wholesale, right. they want to flip, right. they want to buy and hold. Mm -hmm. They want to do all of these things and they're yeah. not doing one thing good. Right. So master your craft. Like don't be jack yes. of all trades. Don't yes. don't try to learn everything uh, and have 10 different mentors or telling you 10 yes. different conflicting information. You want to be centered. You know, that's the key. I think from what I've learned in my career is that when I got into management consulting and worked for one of the top consulting firms in the world, um, I, I learned those skills. I learned a secret sauce a focus you yes. know, when you focus on something things just multiply faster and faster uh, and so that's a really great point and I'm glad you shared that now with all your knowledge and I'm, I know we'll be doing more videos people will be seeing more of you uh, where can people find you either on the internet or email or uh, what's the best way to reach you if they were to connect with you and, and make a connection so yeah um, so my email address is your home with Jamie at your G home with Jamie at gmail.com at gmail okay. Okay. And do you check your email? Absolutely. Absolutely at all times. Twenty four seven. <laughs> <laughs> that I can vouch for. Yes. Well, thank you, Jamie. It's been a pleasure having you. Yeah, thank and you. And we for look having forward me. to many more times with you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank yeah. you.